Do you have a series of problems and concerns that you see as terrible and insurmountable? Is it something you can't bear in any way? Do you want to learn how to solve them? Well, here, at Javier Colaroid, I'm not going to teach you how to solve them. But what I'm going to do is give you some tools to heal our mind from this problem of being unable to bear the adversities of life. In this video I will refer you to the lessons of the renowned psychologist Raphael Santandru, as well as to my reading and personal contribution. The terribleization, as the psychologist names it. It is the father of emotional illness. A scourge in this society. It is the tendency to tell ourselves that any adversity is the end of the world, the nuclear war. I am not able to bear it in any way. The thing is that since we don't stop telling ourselves these ideas, we argue over and over again in favor of this thought until we believe it and reinforce these beliefs. This makes us end up very angry, depressed and scared, but you have to realize the following, that in reality there is nothing terrible in life. Since the worst that can happen to you is to die, and that is assured sooner or later. When we are neurotic we have this crazy tendency to see everything as hideous, also more complex things such as pain or illness, or even suffering, this is something more difficult since it is necessary to work so as not to perceive it as something terrible too. But it is achieved. Acceptance is important so as not to terrify, but it must be a joyful acceptance, which is the proposal from cognitive psychology. It is different from a sad acceptance or resignation. Joyful acceptance is a release. An example of the situation that people in this society take is terrible. Imagine that your boyfriend girlfriend, husband wife leaves you, from the joyous, acceptance it is first to understand the reality that it was not something desirable, something that you did not expect or want, from here on you already reason that you have never really needed to have a partner. From here, you reflect and look for arguments that make sense in favor of this. Perhaps they are arguments that you find difficult to find because it is something that you have never thought about. Thinking something like that is something new for you. Besides that it will be uncomfortable since it involves work and effort, not a denial of the facts. You can find arguments like that you were already single in your life and you lived the happy and joyful life. Also that there are single people who live their lives happily and not having a partner does not prevent anything. What you have to do is look for and even take personal references that live with these beliefs and do the work of understanding what their way of seeing life should be to believe what they believe. In addition, in this new situation, you can consider it as something exciting, a new stage of life that you did not expect, but that has come as a challenge to show yourself how you can have a great single life. Because in reality, it takes very little to get right in life. This is a joyous acceptance because doing without this, giving up this good makes you stronger. You have to see, understand and even visualize that living in poverty you could be happy. Once this is internalized, you calm down and relax. Then, with the situation that you have left, you consider it to do something great and motivating with it and take advantage of even the good that this has. One of my mantras that I like to remind myself is that everything in life is learning, therefore, in the face of this situation in which your partner left you, there are many good things you can learn. Reflect on it instead of complaining, and you will see how you do a good learning. Is it necessary to have a bad time to realize it? There are people who, after a serious illness or accident, change their vision of life and see it differently, thanking the few and small valuable things that really matter. They change their values and attitude towards life but it's not really a necessary thing. You can get there without this harsh life lesson. In addition, there are also always those who, despite these adversities, do not learn. They keep complaining. It really only works if you take this situation as a door to learn from it. Suffering is a door to rethink yourself and realize what is truly important in life, opening yourself up to others, the support you find in others, makes you connect more with people, your friends and close people, create closer relationships, and enjoy them more. But as I said, for this you have to open your mind to this situation of suffering. You have to tell yourself that in this situation, you are going to get the most out of it. And after passing it, you will be a happier, stronger, more resilient, and wiser person. You can do this from a framework such as cognitive psychology. It is not the only one, but it is a great help since usually people do not. I think that this modern society is also what it promotes, it is the inertia it has. 
I mean terrify everything. If you have found the video useful and you liked it, subscribe to the channel, give the bell, and give it a like. Write me in the comments that you think regarding the joyful acceptance, the terribilitation, write me if you also follow the psychologist Raphael Santandru and want me to take more videos explaining his lessons.